ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We need to get into everything you need to know about AMC stock, and let me tell you right now, the next... 48 hours or so are going to be incredibly volatile for the markets and could lead to quite the upside for AMC stock. Now, we're going to take a look at the option activity, which is on a degree of bullishness that we have not seen in a very, very long time. The amount of calls outstrips or outpaces the amount of puts by like a three to four to one ratio. So that I think is pretty exciting. It gives us an interesting setup throughout the rest of this week. We do have some big economic data coming out tomorrow morning and a speech from Fed Jerome Powell still to come today. So we have a jam-packed video for you. We're going to go through everything. We're going to go through bond yields, what the bond market is doing, as well as energy and the yield curve inversions. Everything you need to know will be here in this video. If that sounds like something you want to be a part of, well, number one, hit that like button. Number two, subscribe to the channel. And number three, you better get ready because we are getting straight into it. So AMC stock today is up 1.39%. This is not all too incredible or too crazy here the markets are doing well as i'm looking at the screen up here google's up two percent meta's up two and a half percent tesla's up two and a half percent nvidia's up two percent apple's up almost one percent so you are outpacing the broader indexes but it's not a huge outsized up move for amc today kind of in line with what the markets are doing now there is neither good nor bad news today on amc stock there's there's no news News in particular to actually speak of but there are some interesting things actually happening as you guys know we do have a lot of FTDs that huge round of FTDs really comes due today now you gotta take with a grain of salt kind of what you know when the FTDs actually get covered on a lot of these FTDs might still be out there you just really don't know. It's not like the SAC or FINRA or anyone else cares about AMC or the FTD situation. So it's kind of like one of those things. Yeah, cover them when you want to. Just just get to it when you get to it. It's not a huge deal from the regulators. So it's not a huge deal with hedge funds, institutions, and market makers that have these FTDs out on AMC stock. And I think that's important to realize. I think that's important to pay attention to. And uh Keep in the back of your mind. Obviously, that's not an investment thesis, but I think you should point out or just remember that there can be a lot of FTDs coming due any day now. It, this chart really doesn't matter too much in the grand scope of things in the logic that I just went over. If regulators don't care, well, these guys with the FTDs certainly don't care as well. But eventually, they will need to be covered on. I think that's basically the long story short. If you take a look at the options market, options are doing something wild that you have not seen in a very long time. There's a lot of option buyers this week on the call side. You do have calls in the money of about 7,000. You have calls out the money or in the money calls of 7,000 out the money calls of 124,000. Check this out. In the money puts at about 17,000. Out the money puts at 38,500. So you have literally like a four to one ratio for calls compared to puts. You have not seen this in a very long time. It looks like the bulls are trying to take over again in the options market. And this is interesting and creates an interesting dynamic heading into the rest of this week. Because if you go ahead and take a look at the option chain, uh, for uh, tomorrow, you do have a lot of calls that are just outside the money. So the highest open interest calls are just outside the money. At the $8 call, you have 13613 for open interest. At the 850 call, you have 11000 for open interest. At the $9 call, you have 15000 for open interest. So a lot of this activity that you're seeing on the out the money calls that we just looked at, 130 plus thousand, most of that is actually held just outside the money from right now. AMC stock is at $7.69 per share. So it's not going to be that hard to get above $8 per share. And you could start to see quite the run if we do get above $8 per share tomorrow. Because as you know, with these weekly options, you know, on the day of expiration, on a Friday, if you get moves that start to put a lot of calls into the money, well, a lot of those options need to be essentially hedged for on that day. So that's where 
I, I think I coined like the mega bounce term and we've seen these play out before your Thursdays and your Fridays can give you explosive moves higher if there's a lot of option activity that is right outside of the money so I think a mega bounce like situation is possible here you shouldn't obviously trade your money based on what I say in these videos or based on any logic or past history we have seen before history tends to repeat itself but you know sometimes it just rhymes a little bit sometimes it doesn't even work the same way as it has in the past we've, we've seen that before and you guys fully understand that but it creates an interesting setup because what I'm about to say next is very applicable to potentially an end of of the week bounce like the end of today potentially tomorrow this week is the end of fiscal year 2023 so if you're a hedge fund that has been short in amc for a long time now and you finally gotten some gains and the stock is sitting at these very low prices i think it makes a lot of logical sense to cover on your short position or to hedge out your short position by going long buying some calls buying some uh, you know protection on your short position at the very least even if you don't want to cover on that short position why because a stock can only go to zero you only have seven dollars left if you're shorting the stock right per share seven dollars stocks going to zero now what are the odds that the stock continues to fall after it's already fallen like 99% from its all-time high? Not that high. It's not that likely that you continue to see a drop with AMC stock. Just on a sheer mathematical basis, maybe you guys could do the actual calculation there. You obviously have to take in implied volatility, the price drop, uh, you know, historically what has happened with AMC. But I'll tell you right now, long story short, of that complex, comp, you know, uh, computing calculation long story short is it doesn't make sense to be short in amc heading into fiscal year 2024 again if you want to book some profits tell your clients hey we just made all this money well you have today and tomorrow to book those gains to hedge out your portfolio sell stock buy stock for fiscal year 2023 there's not going to be a lot of buying happening in this market the next two days probably a lot of selling and a lot of overall hedging out there and that would make sense to me especially in amc if you've been short cover on your short position heading out of 2023 fiscal year and maybe even go long in amc for 2024's fiscal year that would make a lot of sense to me because some of the returns that you could see even on a big bounce here with amc would make a lot of sense so when you couple this psychology this logic with the option activity you could get quite the move here in the next 48 hours or so so again obviously anything can happen but that makes a lot of sense to me and that's the logic that i'm gonna roll with here but it's obviously not a guarantee now basically if you look at amc stock nothing is happening for a long time now nothing is happening the stock is literally doing absolutely nothing it's trading at $7.64, up about a half percent right now as the markets are taking a slight move lower. AMC stock has basically been bottoming out, basing out for a while now. And this usually sets you up for an upside move. I think if we were going to come down, it was probably when the S&P was actually falling by quite a bit and you're just not seeing any correlation with AMC and the S&P. AMC has been flat. S&P has been falling recently. Now, markets are in a vulnerable spot. So sure, if we get bad economic data tomorrow, if there's a reason for people to sell stocks, that's obviously not going to be great for AMC. That's not the best thing in the world to see the markets collapsing. Uh, but it doesn't have to be one of those situations where AMC goes with the markets. Now, if we take a look at the Ortex data here with AMC, you guys got to remember, take this with a big grain of salt as well. It looks like there's a lot of shorting activity today with AMC, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. It looks like about 1.15 million shares are actually being sold short today. If you take a look at the cost of borrow fees, you got about 2% over here on Interactive Brokers, 4.5% over here on uh, Ortex's estimates. And again, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The cost of borrow fees are low. Why? Why are cost of borrow fees low? Because you have seen very little upside volatility. You've seen a lot of downside volatility. That's for sure. The stock has fallen a lot. But even when you've based out, you really haven't seen those huge rallies in 
quite some time. You got to go back here to the end of August to get any kind of big day for AMC. Now, these eight, nine percent days we have seen over the past couple of weeks, those are not big days. That is not upside volatility when you go up eight percent and then fall the next day after that. No, I'm, I'm talking about like a 20 percent day followed by a couple more green days, right? That's what I mean by upside volatility, getting a move higher. You did see that back here from $10 to $14, and that's when the cost of borrow fees were in the teens. Imagine if you start to get a real upside move with AMC. Cost of borrow fees, that's when they will spike. Now, if we take a look at some of the option activity here on the day today with AMC stock, and take a look at the analysis here uh, over here on Webull. You have total call activity of about 61,000 contracts, puts of 44.85 thousand contracts, the ask or above on the call side, 35,000 at the ask or above on the put side, 15,000. So this is really what I like to pay attention to because if you're willing to pay more than the actual ask here, that is uh, pretty obvious you want to get into a position, right? That's just, that's it. People want to get into call positions, into bullish positions here with AMC stock, and they're willing to pay more to do so. So that is interesting. Now, in the world of bonds, uh, well, actually, we should just go through the rest of the Ortex data here. Uh, keep in mind, we've done this for two years, so I don't want to stop now. But uh, you got to take these numbers with a big grain of salt, okay, like a truck full of salt. You have a short score of 66. $165 million worth of short positions currently on AMC stock. Estimated short interest of free float at 11.01%. 13.33% short interest of free float. Shares out on loan, 26.36 million. Days to cover, 1.86. Cost to borrow, 3.93%. And utilization of 56.29%. So some muted numbers over here. But again, the amount of shares that are sold short is at an all-time high for AMC. You've never been this short. The only difference is AMC has raised a lot of capital. They have increased the amount of shares outstanding. So the percentages do look very different than what we have been used to seeing here in the past. So I would still say you're very uh, squeezable, but the short interest is just lower. Now, if we take a look at the two-year treasury, that is down about five basis points today, giving a breather to markets. Oil is down about 1.23%, again, giving a breather to the markets. You have seen a big rise in energy and oil. Oil has went from about $67 a barrel back here uh, in the beginning of July. Now you're at 90 almost $93 a barrel. Every time you have seen a spike in oil, or right before a recession, I should say, you have always seen a spike in oil since 1945. If if this continues, that's definitely going to be a spike, and we're going to be sitting here questioning, like, hey, is this the spike of oil before we go into that ultimate recession? Okay, so that's not great. Ten-year Treasury yields today are uh, only down about one basis point. So you're actually seeing a steepening of the yield curve inversion, which is taking place today. Now the 10 and the two year is only inverted 49 basis points. This typically happens right before you actually go into a recession. Same thing over here as well. You are now less than 1% inverted on the 10 year and the three month yield curve inversion. Again, this happens usually right before you do go through a recession, okay? Go ahead and, and pull this up. Uh, like, look at that. I mean, usually right before a recession, you get a big steepening of the yield curve inversion. So this is not the greatest sign. We'll have to wait and see ultimately how this shakes out. If we do go into recession, if we don't, why the yield curve is uninverting the way it is. Now, today you've gotten a lot of data that has came out already. Nothing was to stand out or too crazy. Fed Jerome Powell, though, speaks at 4 p.m. today. So right as the markets are closing, you're going to get a speech from Powell. Then you have a lot of Japanese data over night tonight you have cpi you have job applications you have unemployment you have retail sales industrial production industrial production will be very important keep in mind japan is the third largest third largest economy in the world japan is the single largest owner of treasuries 
for any country out there. A lot of people think China owns the U.S. No, Japan really owns the U.S. They own a lot of our treasuries, uh, almost a trillion dollars worth of our treasuries. So Japanese markets, whatever happens over here, is very, very important if they start to maybe have good economic data or even bad economic data that could move around Japan's money in our treasury market and they could start to sell some treasuries potentially even driving up bond yields further so that's what investors will be watching for I think that will be very important overnight tonight and then coming tomorrow morning you have personal spending month over month personal income month over month and PCE data that comes out tomorrow morning I don't really think inflation at all is important to our markets because the Fed made it very clear if inflation falls but the economy does well, they will continue to hold rates. They will not cut rates. If the economy goes to the poop shoots and you go into recession, well, that's not great either for markets. So it really doesn't even matter what PCE comes out as. Personal spending is the big data point. Uh, coming tomorrow because if that falls off cliff, well, 70% of GDP here in the U.S. is related to personal spending and consumption. So if consumption falls, that's what you want to be watching for. That's what sends us into a recession. And everything I'm seeing here on the ground in the economy does not look great. So I'm not very excited about this data report that comes out tomorrow morning let me know what you guys think about the economy how is the economy doing in your opinions uh you know how is it where you live are you seeing a lot of people with more money than they had before with uh, better jobs than they had before are they spending more than they were before let me know down below in the comment section so that is going to do it for this video hopefully you guys learned something if you did hit that like button as well as subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with future videos that's going to do it for this one you guys enjoy the rest of your day and i will see you in the next one